Hello there. We've got a lot to look at today. We'll see how to deal with the challenge of quilting with squares, both positive and negative. We'll look at some beautiful effects you can do with neon threads. Barbara Oliver Hartman is here to show us some of her amazing work with hand-dyed fabrics, and she's going to share her tips for organizing dyeing supplies. Plus, we're looking at quilt labels. We better get started. Stay tuned. Linda's Long Arm Quilting is aired free to you by Gamel Quilting Systems Vision 2. Innovation taken to the next level. My stitch, my vision, my Gamel. Coming up, we'll be quilting with squares and adding color with neon threads. But right now, I want you to see some of the beautiful work that Barbara Oliver Hartman does with hand-dyed fabric. Welcome, Barbara. Thank you, Linda. Thank you for inviting me. Well, I was just thrilled to have you uh, come and show us all your tips and techniques on your fabric dyeing today. I have admired your quilts for years and just, I mean, my tongue just hangs out when I go to shows and see your new creations. Well, you know it's a mutual admiration society. <laughs> Thank you. How long have you actually been quilting? You're not a long-arm quilter. No, I'm not a long-arm quilter. I've been I've sewed my whole life, mm -hmm. and I've really been seriously quilting for about 25 years. Wow, and and you 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 just come out with new things all the time, and I don't know how you do it. <laughs> There's just so many ideas and so little time. Yes, there are. <laughs> so tell us about this dyeing. You know, okay, because you dye a lot of the fabrics that go into your quilts. Yes, so. yes, I do. I. I dye a lot of the fabric myself. I purchase dyed fabric from other people. Mm -hmm. I like to incorporate it using uh, batiks mm -hmm. and different fabrics mm -hmm. that I purchase sometimes at quilt shops okay. and quilt shows. I've heard that it could be dangerous. You know, you have to wear masks and things. Or well, it, it's very simple, if, but there's a few basic safety things that you should do. Okay. Like, it's, I sort of liken it to using any uh, household cleaners. Like, if oh, okay. you, it, treat it like it's bleach. Okay. Uh, you know you're not going to want to breathe the fumes right. of that. Right. And you're going to want to wear rubber gloves. So maybe an outside you would... Yes, it's it, in a well-ventilated area. Mm -hmm. yeah. And basically what you need uh, you need containers to okay. mix in. Just regular household items. Yes. Okay. I use squeeze bottles. You can put it on with foam brushes. Uh, just very simple items. When you, another thing that is very handy, if you're especially people in apartments mm -hmm. or small confined areas, mm -hmm. the Ziploc bag is a very nice way. Maybe you can a heavier do, duty one. Well, yeah. this is the freezer bag okay. and you can uh, mix your dye and you can have, you can get a lot of these bags full oh, of fabric yes. in a sink. Okay. And so even if you don't have a large area to spread it all out and work in, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you have these. Okay. The dyes come from uh, different companies that you'll see them advertised in the quilt magazines and the fiber arts magazines mm -hmm. and most of the time you'll be mail ordering them. Okay. Uh, the type of dye is it's a uh, fiber reactive dye. Okay. Protean fiber reactive dyes and uh, once they're mixed with water you don't have to worry about fumes or anything. Okay, That's so when they you're going to wear a powder form. Right, they okay. come in a powder form mm -hmm. you'll mix them. Mm -hmm. What I do is I always have my rubber gloves handy because oh. anytime you're handling this, mm -hmm. just like it was bleach, okay. you would be using your rubber gloves. Okay. What I do is, I think the thing that, that makes it easy is to organize your equipment and you can do this in a relatively small space mm -hmm. if you are organized. Okay. I use the empty water bottles and my Sharpie and I Write the color, Write the on color it. Okay. that I'm mixing. Okay. And I mix the concentrate. I will mix at a time maybe a couple of dozen colors. Oh, and okay. have 
Do they Lots. last a long time then like Actually, that? before they're uh, activated with soda ash, mm -hmm. they'll last a couple of weeks if you're stored in a cool, dry place. Oh, okay. Very easily last for that mm -hmm. long. So when I'm mixing, I also have my little plastic um, spoons. spoons. Okay. And I have corresponding little cups. So that way I always know what colors I'm because you get Some that many colors. Dark. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And and you can't look at that bottle no. and tell the color that's <laughs> they all look be. the same. Because they do. Yeah. The other key ingredient is synthropol, which is a uh, what you wash it with okay. when you get through dyeing. Mm -hmm. When yeah. I first started dyeing, I was working in uh, it was the common thing to do was color gradations. Yes, I've seen from that light before. to dark. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And when I first started dyeing, I would do the light to dark, and you would do the different stages. Mm -hmm. Then we started graduating a little bit, and getting out into you know the old time tie dye. Rubber band. Type yes, thing. the rubber okay. band or tie. <laughs> I think I have some shirts like this. Yes, yes right, I do. right. The next most fun thing to do was called shibori, okay. which is an old technique where you're using sort of some of the tie-dye mm -hmm. techniques and you're putting more of a pattern on there. Oh, what I did with this colors. was wrap the fabric on a PVC pipe uh -huh. about 18 inches long, uh -huh. put uh, rubber, bands rubber band, again. either rubber bands or twine. twine? Okay. And then put the, pour the dye over it, and it forms these wonderful patterns. And these look very nice cut up. It mm -hmm. gives you pattern. Kind of lines mm -hmm. on them. Mm -hmm. Another thing that I have that was very popular, still is, mm -hmm. and, and useful, mm -hmm. is doing things uh, if people are making um, pictorial quilts, oh, either in so blocks or whatever. Yes, um, yes. And you want sky, you know, things mm -hmm. that look like realistic. Not sky. all just one color, but cloudy. But, and... Yes, right. You know, as quilters, we have collected lots of calicos and our, our and, fabrics and, and fabrics that are just not. We don't use, we will we, never probably no. use. Okay. The fun thing to do is over dyeing them. Oh, so you can take some of those little calicos and put them in different just colors. See what happens to and them. just see what happens you know, because what difference would it make? Right. right. It's things you're not going to be using mm -hmm. anyway, so why not? These are pretty. Another thing that I have enjoyed doing is I will buy a lot of just black and white fabrics. Okay. And then I will dye them oh, all. Oh, how um, interesting. Into some of the newer right, colors. Into some of the newer colors. Mm -hmm. And the black stays black. And the black stays black. And the other colors. Oh. And the other colors. Oh, and I can see this incorporated into a right. quilt. Right. So, <laughs> Is this your next shell quilt? <laughs> right. <laughs> right. So that way I have lots to now. If I decide that I have too much of this, mm -hmm. you can dye it again. I can dye it again. <laughs> okay. And, you know, in, into another grouping. Yeah. Now, here I've done this pretty much one color. Mm -hmm. I have another group here that has more color. This was a black and white. Okay. Oh, that's pretty. It has the different colors on it. So it has all yes. the different colors. Those blues and so and to orchids. incorporate, oh. I dyed this all at the same time. It's beautiful. Well, let's take a look at okay. some of your quilts. This quilt over here is called Limelight, and I dyed all the fabrics in that quilt. Now you can see where they all sort of blend together. Mm -hmm. They're my very favorite colors. The greens I, and the, the greens oranges and, and the, the oranges pinks. and the pinks and very um, very vi vibrant. And the quilting that you've done on that, you've you've combined. Uh, is that all hand quilted? Yes, that, that particular one is all hand that quilted. one. Very few yes. of my quilts are all. Because I notice a lot of the work that you do, you combine your machine yes. quilting, and then you always put some little hand I stitching on it. I always do, and I always feel when I finish a quilt and I haven't put a few of my own hand stitches <laughs> on it, I always feel bad. I just want to, it personalizes it just well, you, a little you'd bit. you always come up with the right touch. But now I'm starting to want to put more pattern back into my quilts. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm 
combining more of the batiks mm -hmm. with the hand dyed fabrics. Mm -hmm. Oh, and that's a beautiful, beautiful quilt. And so this is a so good you're example. Well, I, what I'm hearing you say, too, is that you kind of go through different stages as a quilter. Yes. And you, you do something until you're kind of done with that, and then you just move exactly. on to the next stage. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. This one back here, it's called Full Circle. And here again, I've picked a batik with many colors mm -hmm. and patterning, and I have added a lot of fabrics that I've either purchased or, or hand dyed overdyed. myself. Now let's take a look at these that you have brought to show okay. us. Okay. Now this is the first quilt in a series I call Child's Play. This fabric that I use here was a fabric that I have painted. Oh, okay. You can like with take brush? these dyes mm -hmm. and you can thicken them with sodium alginate and uh, all of the dye companies have this and instructions. Mm -hmm. And you can paint just like it's paint. You can thicken it up. And that's what I've done here. And I had about a two or three yard piece. And I just cut it into sections. And when I painted it, I just did it just, just like fine. a tile plane. Just like, oh. just like it, mm -hmm. it's um, meant to sound. Mm -hmm. And I did that quilt. Now, since I loved doing that so much, I've painted more yardage. More yardage. Oh, how, oh, these are fun. So I have. These are so fun. Then what I did is I and went. And simple, simple yes, designs. Yes, simple, and when it's all cut up, mm -hmm. it'll be very fun. Mm -hmm. Then I went just with some solid colors to coordinate with it. So you can with go it. with it. So I can use all of these just in one piece. Stripes. Plus, I can add a few pieces, if I want to, of other fabric mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and continue the series. Well, I'm looking forward to seeing these quilts yes. when they're finished. Now, here's another thing that I've done. I've taken, again, some black and black white. Black and white fabric. Black and white fabrics. I've painted a piece. And then when I dyed the background, I also dyed these at the same time. So I have a whole group here so where I can add more pattern to Similar it. to what you've got on, mm -hmm, on the mm -hmm. Child's Play quilt. Right. I can see. So this is all part of a series. Now this one has your interesting quilting on it. Yes. And this is, this is another one of those very few hand quilted quilts. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, I was doing a series on grief. I lost my sister about five years ago. Mm -hmm. And I, for a period of time, worked on a, a group. This is called Breathing Room. Mm -hmm. And this is all my hand dyed fabrics that I use. And I love your little um, stitches. Yes, that just... that's my little personalizing. That's beautiful. And then the last one in the series was called Acceptance, mm -hmm. and it's this quilt right here. And the thing I did here was this was a batik, and wherever you see this lighter color that's kind of a peach color, mm -hmm. that was all just off-white. Okay, so you dyed so it. So I dyed the whole batik and changed the color of it and made it coordinate with all right the other here. fabrics that I had hand dyed or other batiks that I had used in and the series. And this one is uh, machine quilted. This is all machine quilted. Yeah, that is beautiful, Barbara. I, I can just pet yeah, this right. fabric all day long. <laughs> These are just gorgeous in the colors. Yes. And um, thank you so much for sharing with us today and, and giving us thank all these tips and, and sharing your secrets with us. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. I'm having so much fun with my new Gamel Vision 2. I have customized my right handle to the start and stop and my tie-off feature as well. My left handle has not only the needle position so I can have my needle start and stop down, but also my stitch button which toggles between stitch modes. This just keeps getting better and better as I envision more possibilities in my quilting applications. Being able to customize the four buttons on the handles has given my creativity wings. My stitch, my vision, my gamble.